Hey guys, Mike here. So I hope you had a good weekend and boy, we got a big week ahead. Ton of economic data coming out this week. Uh, earnings, which have all to do with us. Boy, we're going to find out how the consumer really is going and what the holiday season is supposed to look like. Okay, so we're going to hear some big companies on this. And, you know, first I want to start off, we'll, we'll go in the charts and stuff, some things I've noticed. But first I want to start off, don't forget this week, obviously, the market makers are planning on taking some people's money because this monthly option is expiring this Friday. And there is a bunch of options out there. So we're going to get to see a lot of manipulation this week. I can't wait to see how this plays out. But, you know, I sent some out to the members of the other night and I was like, it was talking about the amount of options that were expiring, that were bought, that were expiring like within 24 to 48 hours was off the charts last week, right? And of course, what we talk about, if you saw my video last week about market makers and how they hedge by having to buy all these shares and all this stuff. And so I think that was obviously part of it because it was just such an enormous move in two days. And the amount of shares being bought up were just crazy, especially on the high beta stocks. And so it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out this week and you know where people are buying options. Are they hedging down, up, are they buying puts, calls, all that. And so I do want to ask a question before I get into the charts, though, is what the hell is going on with food? Like, can somebody explain this to me? Because when you look at this, look at shipping costs, right? This used to be a big one where they said, oh, my God, shipping costs are what's really driving inflation up. Well, shipping costs are back down to pre-pandemic levels. I mean, they've fallen off a cliff. They're back down where they're supposed to be, right? Then you look at commodities like wheat, which pretty much goes into everything, right? Since May. Uh, it's down 33%. You know, you look at corn. Corn, not so much. It went down quite a bit, came back up, but it's still down 13% since May. You look at beef. Beef, you know, is down quite a bit since May, as you can see by this chart right here. But yet, look at what happened in the last uh, report for CPI. Where do you see the minuses at here, and point them out if you see them, in food at home and then food away from home? Like everything is positive, like it's still increasing. It's just not increasing as much. And so, you know, that's my big question. And please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button and share this video, guys. It really helps the channel out. Thank you very much. And it's important because this affects everybody, right? And this is the biggest conversation we have. You know, we had uh, dinner and hung out with some neighbors, a bunch of neighbors the other night. Like this is the one topic you always hear around the dinner table with people talking about, hey man, you seen your, gro your grocery bill coming down? It's like, not really, no. I mean, what, what's going on? And I feel like it goes back to what I talked about months ago. I said, isn't there going to be two waves of inflation? Like, first, you got to get the people providing the stuff to bring the prices down. First, you know, commodity prices have to come down, shipping prices, all this other stuff has to come down first. And then you got to get the companies that we're buying it from Walmart, Target, Publix, all that good stuff, Amazon, to bring the prices down. But when you look at it, it doesn't seem like that's happening. Is it? I mean, maybe it's happening in your area, not in my area, that's for sure. And I'm just because when you look at the input costs, you go, well, dang, they should be they should be paying lower prices by now, right? It's not costing them as much to get it shipped over here. And they shouldn't be getting charged as much by their suppliers. And yet when it comes to passing it on, it seems like they're holding these prices up, right? And I think this comes down to, if that's the case, obviously, that we talked about this before. Isn't that what's gonna happen? Like, why would these companies lower prices? If we're still willing to pay, especially when it comes to groceries, we got to eat, right? Got to buy milk, got to buy eggs. And by the way, what the hell is going on with eggs? Uh, my wife's family and a bunch of her friends, their family own chicken farms. Uh, and we had to call them and say, are the chickens dying or something? Because eggs are the most expensive thing as far as going up, have, have astronomically gone up, right? And I'm like, the chickens aren't dying. Do people start eating more eggs? Is that what happened? I don't think so. You know, milk, uh, all that stuff still going through the roof, right? And I'm just trying to figure out what is going on. So if you're a commodity expert, or is this just pure manipulation by the big companies that keep trying to rake in money to drive their stocks up? Is that what's happening? Because that's what I feel like is happening, but I could be wrong. And if that is happening, you know, that's the one problem you have with inflation. How do you get them to bring their prices down? Because we're not going to stop shopping. We're just not. All right. And that's what I said this week on earnings, which we'll go into, is huge for that. And, you know, looking at the charts here, Obviously, you know, we've seen this chart before. We're right there filling the gap. We're right there at the golden pocket. The 200 moving average I don't even have on here, but that's there. And so we'll see what happens. Eventually, we have to start consolidating, right, because of this big move up. But I did discover something. I have no rhyme or reason to this, but as you can see, there's two simple moving averages, right? Both are 200. Both are calculated differently. I have no idea how this one's calculated up here. I know how the one on the bottom is. 
And I just, just look at this accidentally. I just pulled these up and I was looking at them because I do weird stuff like that when I look at charts. And I was looking at this and I was like, okay, let me go back here and see if there's anything to this. Because when I was scrolling through, all of a sudden I noticed when we break on, a, on a, a bear market, when we break the 200 moving average on the one on the bottom, it comes up and it bumps up against this other 200 moving average, which I don't know how that 200 moving average is calculated. Well, back in 2001, same thing happened. It broke the 200, moved back, bounced off the other 200. And then we tanked in both scenarios, right? So I'll scroll back and say, let me see if I can find any more like this where we were in you know, a down market, a bear market. And same thing happened right here, right? It comes down, breaks, comes up, rejects off of it, and then we tank, right? It happened to the one you see to the left right there. Same thing happened, right? And so when we scroll back over and say, well, what's happening now? You can see clearly that, as I discussed, I think it was a few weeks ago, on the, on the weekly here that we broke down through the 200 well now we're heading right back up and we're right below that other 200 moving average right and as i said that 200 moving average is going to meet uh with uh the golden pocket with that gap fill with the edge of this uh descending channel here that we've been in since january and so again don't know how that one's calculated but obviously it's different and I just thought it was very interesting to see. And so according to history, we should actually reject back off of it and start heading back down through the other 200. We'll have to see because that is a big gap right there, as you can see. But I at least wanted to present it to you, get your opinion. Um, and, you know, the other thing is looking at QQQ. I took the channel out. You look at this trend line, which bounced off one, two, three, and now we're right up against it on the QQQ, right? And so you see we broke through it before. And for those who keep asking about a bottom, look, it could be a bottom. But obviously, look at this. We've never, ever bottomed with 60% or more of the yield curves inverted. And so now we're at 60%. You can see right there, that was like 75. The other one was almost 80. The other one was 95. Uh, and, and, and bear markets, and really, I mean, 2018, 19 wasn't even a bear market. But still, that's one thing you got to think about. And I always say, yes, could this be a year as a first? And, and yes, as I've always said, this could be a year first. We could absolutely bottom without oil rolling over and all these yield inversions and everything else could be totally thrown off with just what's happening with it, with the trillions of dollars still out there uh, in the market. They still haven't got out uh, because of something the Fed and the Treasury are doing, which is slowing the process down to get this, the, uh, uh, get the liquidity out of the market, excuse me. And so, yes, that could throw everything off. All the extra earnings people are earning. Like, all these metrics would be thrown off and just mean nothing. It could happen, right? I mean, it wouldn't be shocking. But as the old saying goes, in a bear market, everything's a bear market rally until proven otherwise. That's the way it is. Be data dependent, be flexible, be nimble, okay? And so that's, you know, that's the way just to keep it simple. And when I was talking about the economic data, first of all, they're going to be ro rolling uh, Fed presidents out like crazy this week. I mean, there's a bunch of them speaking. Monday, nothing real big. But then you got the PCI index, which the Fed loves to look at. You're going to have a lot of stuff about houses. And then retail sales on Wednesday. Again, are we spending? I mean, this is going to be a big thing to watch out for. You're going to have the ha housing builders come out. How's the housing industry? It doesn't look great to me. But we'll see what happens there. You never know, right? Building permits, initial jobless claims. The Fed will pay close attention to all this because obviously the real estate market is the first thing that gets basically smashed. And then, of course, Friday, you're going to have uh, leading economic indicators, which I'm definitely looking forward to. Existing home sales, I'm looking forward to that. And then earnings, again, as this is all about us. I mean, if you look here Monday, you know, Tyson's something to pay attention to. The rest of them, eh, not really. But then we go into Walmart. Home Depot, C, Krispy Kreme, right? Uh, you go over to the right, you got Advanced Auto Parts, right? Looking at that right there. You go into Wednesday. A lot of people are into Zim. I think that's the one they do for the uh, dividend. But then you got Target, Lowe's, uh, TGX right there. You got NVIDIA, which is going to be a big one for semiconductors. And I'm going to show you the chart on that one uh, to show you why. That's a big one to watch out for. Uh, then you go in here and you go uh, to Thursday, right? You're going to end up with... Uh, Baba, how's China? It's all going to be all about China, and are they going to stop the COVID stuff and all that stuff and the lockdowns? And you got Macy's, Kohl's, BJ's. You roll through it. Make sure you pay attention to applied materials. That's going to be a big one, I think. Gap, and we'll see how they're doing. But anyway, are we still buying a lot of stuff? Ross's and all the rest of these right here uh, to pay attention to. You got JD.com. Again, that's all about China. Foot Locker, are we still buying shoes? 
And speaking of NVIDIA, here is their chart. And you can tell they're bumping right up against this moving average. This is the 150-day moving average uh, right here, if I'm not mistaken. You got resistant, big major resistance line right above it. But the stock has moved up huge, right, in a very short amount of time heading into earnings. Obviously, it is overbought. And as you can see, look like MACD may have a little bit to run. But it ain't been overbought all year. And you can see this is one of those stocks that loves to get overextended. So it can keep going. That, that is for sure. It can blow right through those resistance levels uh, and get up there and hit that outer band uh, right before earnings is where they're going to meet. And if you look right here, I mean, what are we up here? It's 51% in 32 days. I mean, it has been moving. And so NVIDIA's earnings, yeah, they're, they're going to be very interesting. Let me know what's comments, what you think is going to happen. Do you think it's going to continue to get overextended? Or finally come back to reality and how do you think the earnings are going to look i mean i don't think they look that great none of them really look that great but uh then again the market has basically suspended reality at this point in time and so does it continue right and but the big thing to look at too when it comes to these semiconductors as i pointed out is the dollar it is approaching a major support level around 105 like 104.75 and 105 somewhere in there is a major support level and if it holds and bounces then what's going to happen to semiconductors they're going to sell off and most stocks probably will too but again if it breaks then this rally is going to have even more legs and there is a point in time if you look back at any extended sell-off right 01 08 74 80 80 to 82 or something like that if you look at those there is a point in time where those channels are set and they have to get extended because there's a breakout and everybody thinks at the bottom and they FOMO in all of a sudden it turns back starts heading back down that channel for whatever reason right something might have happened or something like that and there's usually in every one of those you'll see a capitulation moment which we still haven't had we, we just had this orderly sell-off i mean just real orderly right just falling straight on down so the cleanest channel i've ever seen when i look at all the other ones um and it's just not this major major drop of 20 percent in two days or whatever and so it, it's amazing how that works and i keep telling you guys make sure talk to people in your bubble in your neighborhood that's where you, you it's amazing the information you'll run across everybody in my bubble you know when it comes to these earnings we're going to see I, I think we're still spending no doubt in my mind because everybody we know it, it's life normal i will say they're everybody in our neighborhood um you know we live in just a regular middle class neighborhood normal folks right you know they i got friends in the real estate business like and one on commercial one on uh the residential and they both work on one's a superintendent one builds all the roofs for all of them and so you know they're putting out some warnings right and because they've gone through 08 and they've gone through other tough times and in the real estate business like this so you know it's it's interesting to listen to them and because i had conversations with them i discovered something which i kind of let I put it down in the Discord, but I'm doing a video for the members now on this, and it's amazing because I've been looking for like bulletproof type um, recession investments, and we hit a real a recession and found like two of them. And then like not only in, in investments, they're actually indicators. Really, is what it comes down to. And I just didn't know because you know I never I've been lucky enough in a recession not have to downsize, sell my home, go into an apartment, all this other stuff. But you know it's amazing to see, and I'm putting together a video for the members to see that. But it's just getting that information, not off the internet, just listening to them and going, really? Is that real? And then going to do the research and go, that's really true. I mean, I was literally sitting in a pool with my neighbors the other day and going, hey, you were right about that. And I showed him why. And he's like, oh, yeah. I mean, but it's amazing listening to people in different walks of life, right? It's amazing how that works. And so, you know, try doing it, see how it goes. And let us know in the comments if you've seen any or heard anything from your neighbors where you go, Better watch out for this because this is happening because they're in this industry over here or this industry over here because every industry is different, right? And this kind of environment and recession, if that's where we're going, you know, we'll have to see, right? So anyway, just want to put that out there to you. Hit the like, subscribe button if you got anything out of it. Always appreciate it, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow.